Hello everybody, this is Bill McFadden, and in this video we're going to get into secondary dominance, and we're just going to keep the second uh, secondary dominance a triad. We could add the seventh, but in this tutorial we'll just get into the basic concept. So let's take a look at this first measure in the scale of C. We have the one chord and the five chord, which is the dominant. So what we're going to do in each of these measures with each of these chords is we're going to go from the one to the five to the one. So for the chord D minor, if we go up to the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, that would be A. So we're going to go from D minor to the A chord. And so in this case, the one chord is D minor and the five chord is A. And here, if we do E minor scale, the fifth note is B. And if we go from E minor, then we get the five of one. And then for F, and then continuing on with G, the fifth note is D, so we go from G to the D major, and you could add in the seventh in each of these cases. And then for A minor, and then B, So the fifth note is F, so the, the dominant of B is F. And so on for D flat. And then E flat. So there's your each note of the scale. So let's take a look at this example of the chord sequence C, E minor, F major, G. And if we have a little melody to that. Now we're in the scale of C. And the dominant of C is the fifth of the scale. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that would be G. So that's the dominant of the scale. So the concept of the second dominant comes in when, let's take a look at the second chord, E minor. So the dominant of the E minor scale would be B. So therefore, since we already have the a dominant in the key of C, we have a secondary dominant to the scale of E. So if I modify the chord sequence from the one to the secondary dominant, which is B, so it's the five of the three chord, because E is a three chord, which the dominant always leads to the tonic. So in the key of E, the B chord leads to E, and then we can go back to our F chord and then our G chord. So if we do that with sound and we do a melody, it's going to change the melody quite drastically. So So we're actually introducing an additional chord into our four bars. Now you could do half a measure and keep the same number of beats in your motif, or you can extend your motif either way you want to do it. So, okay, let's take a look at another example. In this second chord sequence, we have a C, A minor, F major, D minor, 
and then down to C. So let's write a little melody with that chord sequence. Now, if we want to change it up a little bit, notice that the second chord, A, we could modify that chord. We could mod or not modify, but we could add a chord to the chord sequence based on the A minor, or we could add one based on the F major or the D minor or even the C. Now, the dominant chord again in the key of C would be G, so that would be the primary dominant. So we can introduce a secondary dominant to the second chord of A. Think of that as a scale of A minor. So the dominant chord in A minor would be E. So that would be a secondary dominant because the primary dominant in the key of C is G. So it would be the dominant of the sixth chord. So let's go ahead and look at that altered chord, se chord sequence, write a melody, and see the difference in sound. So Again, we see the secondary dominant gives us a, an additional chord to insert into an existing sequence and make it more interesting. And at the same time, it introduces uh, chromaticism into the melody, which again makes it more interesting. So let's take a look at the third example here. We have the chord sequence D minor, E minor, F major, and G. And so a melody on that chord sequence could sound like this. Okay, so if we look at the, actually in this case, if we look at the F chord and its dominant, which is C, because in the scale of F, the fifth note is C, so that's the dominant. And if we look also at the, the last chord, G major, and look at its secondary dominant, because in the scale of G, the fifth note is D. So by adding those two chords, the secondary dominant or the dominant of F, which is a secondary dominant, and another secondary dominant, because the primary dominant. Actually, in this case, the dominant would be, of the D minor scale, would be A major. So they're both secondary dominants. So let's go ahead and play the sequence with these chords inserted in the chord sequence. And actually, in this case, Instead of changing the melody, we'll just go ahead and change the harmony and you can see the difference, how it sounds harmonically. So, another thing we can do is Just sort of use it as a, a chord under whatever note we're playing, so. So you can color up the melody, you can color up the harmony with the use of these secondary dominants. 
And so the more familiar with the these dominants here, then the easier it will be to incorporate them into your chord sequences and make more interesting melodies and more interesting harmonies. So this is Bill McFadden signing off from Tone Pure Music.